Isaiah chapter 3. <clears throat> For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, does take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, a famine. Stay is a support or rest. So he's going to call for no food, no water. For their idolatry that we read in the previous chapter. You know, you look at the nations and the places where Roman Catholicism is in their idolatry. They're not rich com countries. The people are poor. The people over in India that, that worship all these gods and, and their, their family are gods. They're poor people. So you wonder why, you know, some of these places, why are they lacking food and all that? Well, here's one reason right here it could be. The fact is that they're worshiping idols and not God. America's going here. The mighty men and the men of war. Strong, strength men, the army, the military, the judge, and the prophet, and the prudent, and the ancient, men who make up a nation. Those are the military, the stronger ones. They're, they're young. The judge, he's a little older. He knows things. The prophet, he's called by God. And maybe even false prophets. And the prudent, he. he He's lived a little bit of life to know. <clears throat> and the ancient, the elder. The captain of 50. All right. The divided into 50, the military. And the honorable man. Somebody well known. And the counselor. Somebody they go to get information, what they should do. And the cunning art, artificer. Somebody who is able to, to make things. And the eloquent orator. Now in Acts, when they're going to bring Paul up before uh, the judge, they hired his orator, and he goes in there, speaks in there, and blah, 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 blah. It's somebody who can speak well, and it's his profession to speak well. I will give children to be their princes. Now he said in verse 1, take away. I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. There will be a no adult rule. The U.S. president's minimum age has to be 35 years old. That's still kind of young to be a leader of a, of, of, of a country and involved in worldwide politics. Especially ones who have not been in the military themselves. But imagine a child ruling a nation. The people shall be oppressed. Every one by another. So there will be burdens that, with unreasonable burdens. By everyone. Not just the government. And it says, and everyone by his neighbor. Your neighbor will be a burden to you. The person you go to work with will be a burden to you. Your friend will be a burden to you. The child shall behave himself proudly. He has no respect for age against the ancient. Now, the Bible says you're to honor your mother and father in the law. The law said if you had a child who's disobedient, drunkard, and all that, you could bring him to the judges and capital punishment. A child that's dealing proudly, he's he's going to be closing yeah, he's going to be closing in on those on those lines. It says that if you know if you don't honor your mother and father, you're not going to have long life. They're dying off early according to the law. And the base against the honorable. Somebody who's nobody, he, he's not going to have no authority over that somebody who's honorable. 
when a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father saying thou hast clothing be thou ruler if the guy has clothing be a ruler that's really I want you to be I want you to be a leader of this part of this land why because you have clothes it's not really a qualification. And let the ruin be under thy hand. There's all this oppression, the famine, child rulership, and loss, and everything. Let it be under your hand, because you have clothes. It's a mess. And they're not, they're, you got clothing, be a ruler. They're not seeking for somebody who can help them. Somebody who can be an aid, somebody who can do something for the country. The qualifications for leadership are shot. Are shot. Because you got clothing, be a ruler. And that day shall he swear. Saying, this is the one that has the clothing. I will not be a healer. I'm not going to heal the nation. I can't heal the way. I can't help. For in my house is neither bread, verses 1 and 2. There's no bread, there's no food. I've got clothes, but I ain't got no food. Nor clothing. Verse 6 says, Thou hast clothing. Unless verse 7 is a person that comes to the guy that says, I want you to make you a ruler because I can't do nothing. You got something. But it says, Make me not a ruler of the people. So here's the person that somebody comes to the house, you got clothing, be a ruler. He's like, what am I? I can't do nothing. I can't help. I ain't got nothing. There's nothing I can do. Beg you excuse me from, from authority. You know, we got people in this country today that are in businesses and they're young. And the only reason why they're at the top of the country because they got a piece of paper they can hang on the wall. And they don't know nothing. And they're doing more damage than good. Tearing the country down. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen. That's who Isaiah is writing to, Jerusalem and Judah. Because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord. So their words and their works are against God. To provoke the eyes of his glory. It's rebellion against God. And every day they do this, and every day they don't get right. God's getting angry and angry and provoking and provoking. The one day he's coming in with Babylon, and he's just going, once he's going to go in there, they don't get right. Twice he's going to send Nebuchadnezzar in there, they don't get right. Third time, tear it all down, brother, and let it burn. Give you three. Listen, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Three times Nebuchadnezzar comes in the God is God is long suffering. How many warnings did he give Jerusalem and, Jeru and Judah? Many, many, many. The shoe of their countenance, their face shows life. Does witness against them. Your face shows life, and the life here is their faces show that they're rebelling against God. They're not happy. They're not smiling. They think they are. Oh, yeah, with booze and partying, they may have a smile on their face, but what about when they're alone? And they declare their sin as Sodom, they hide it not. 
Solomon did it openly. Gomorrah was, hey, look, look what we're doing. They came to Lot's door, pry them open, and knock it on the door. We want those men. And I'll tell you why we want them men. There was no hiding. And then when they were struck with blindness, they wearied themselves to find that they didn't try to stop. I suppose if you were to go in 70, 760 BC, thereabouts, this is my date of my mind. If you were to go walk in Jerusalem, I guarantee you would see on every street corner a, 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 a typical Catholic church. Groves, statues. One of the minor prophets says that, uh, I forget which prophet, it says, on every street corner. That's America. Of all the churches you have and all the garbage that does not worship God. Whoa, whoa. You better watch out for the woes. Onto their soul. Soul. That's your eternal state. For they have rewarded evil unto themselves. They do their own judgment. And they'll stand before God one day. Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. You'll get what you deserve. That's what that's saying. Whoa! Careful. Unto the wicked. Tell the righteous he's going to, he's going to get right. He's going to get what he deserves. That's good. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him. Sick. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. You don't want that. See, the righteous man will get righteous fruit. The wicked will get ill. Sick. That's the description of chapter 1. As for my people, God says, children are their oppressors. I thought the children were supposed to be under the authority of the parents and the adults. The church, the family, the nation. Children are ruling sun the Sunday school class because we don't want to hear about it. We want to have fun games and toys. And if you don't give us fun games and toys, we'll just tell our parents to tell, bring us somewhere else. Because we have our parents under our thumb. And we'll just make a show in every store and kick on the floor and scream and holler and embarrass our parents if they don't listen to us. And we can call DCF and we can call any government authority if they try to spank us and try to do us wrong. Uh oh. And women rule over them. Hmm. So women that are in leadership are in the same class, in the same verse, with children that are oppressive. God had never designed a woman to be in leadership. Proverbs 31. The mother writes to her son and says, listen, don't give that authority to, to a woman. Verses you can find for that one, Genesis 3.16, Esther 1.22, 1 Corinthians 11.38, 1 Timothy 3.4, and Proverbs 31.3. Women were never to be in authority. That's the man's job. Let him worry. Oh, my people. And yes, Judah had a woman queen. Athea. Athea, yeah. However you want to put it. Man, she, she was wicked. Israel had a, had a kind of uh, Clinton thing there with Jezebel. Man in charge, but the woman did all the deeds. Wickedness. 
O my people, they which led thee, the children and the women, caused thee to err. And destroy the way of thy path. I think, let's see. Next paragraph, Mark. I think we'll go a little one more paragraph. So there's destruction. When you give children and women the authority. And that's in the church, that's in the family, and that's in the nation. What the Bible says, you don't like it, that's you have it out with God. Adam didn't take his place, and look where we are today because of his backing down. He should have ripped that fruit out of her hand and threw it away. The Lord standeth up. That's what uh, Stephen saw. He says, I see Jesus standing. The Lord stands up to plead. That's Acts 7.55. And standeth to judge the people. The judges in them days would stand up. They wouldn't sit on a the bench. they stand. Everyone would be able to hear them. We got it backwards. We got, we got the plaintiffs and defendants standing. When it came time for the judge to give the sentence, he would stand up. Everyone would look at him, see who he was. He was the authority. He would pronounce judgment. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, those who know better. Those who were in charge of bringing up the ones that were before them. These children that are being brought up wrong and all that are in charge of the ancients. Those are the ones that brought them up. And the princes thereof, those who are, are under the king in the rulership. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. And Jesus said, a certain man planted the vineyard, hedged it about, went off to a farm, and they ate the lives of the Jews. The spoil of the poor is in their house, is in your houses. You went and robbed the poor, and I can find in your house the stuff you stole from them. Proverbs chapter 1. Don't you worry about being overtaxed in America. If their taxation is wrong and unrighteous, God knows it's in their houses and God will deal with them. You just do what you're supposed to do. You keep your hands praying, you keep your eyes in the Word, and you keep serving the God. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces? That's not nice. And grind the faces of the poor. Saith the Lord of hope. Hey, what we've read for 15. Oppression. There's famine. There, there's no water. And the government is, is cranking down on the people. And stealing from the people. And children are rising up as, as authority. And the women are coming into the seats of authority, and it's all chaos. And God says, I see exactly what you're doing, I see what's, what you're doing to the poor. If the Lord tarries, this country's only going to get worse. So don't stop complaining, stop the tea parties, just get in a Bible believing church, serve the Lord, do right, and witness. And let God take care of everything else. 